Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. And now, if you like sex, because most do, most, most like sex. If you like sex, Blue Chew offers men a performance enhancement for the bedroom. Or elsewhere, you could do it wherever you want. You know, if somebody's willing to accept that hard on, bro, that HO, then you could serve it wherever. But wouldn't you like to last longer and go extra rounds? At BlueChew.com, you can get the first chewables with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Now, chewables can work faster than pills, up to two times as fast. That's twice as fast. The chewables from Blue Chew can be taken on a full stomach or an empty stomach. So, if you have a full stomach, you can have them. If you have an empty stomach, you could be like, oh, I'm hungry, but don't have like 50 or 60 because that's not going to fill you up. It's not a meal. It's an, it's an additive, really. It's something else you have. You can get an online physician consult that is free. So, it's cheaper than those other two, Viagra and Cialis. It only takes a few minutes to connect with a BlueChew.com affiliated physician. And if you qualify, you can get prescribed online quickly. Not shocking. You can get everything else you want in the world. Of course, you could catch a little bit of that hard heat. You know, you could catch a little bit of that front blood, bro. That fifth hoof, you feel me? Get at it. There is no in-person doctor visit, no awkward conversation. So it's not like, hey, 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 what about this, uh, you know, uh, wiener? It ships directly to your door in discreet packaging. Maybe a guitar case it shows up and people think you're doing music and you're just doing, you know, a little bit more peen time. It's a great deal for you guys. Right now you can visit bluechew.com. And get your first order free when you use promo code T-H-E-O. Just pay $5 shipping. That's right, at B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W dot com and use promo code T-H-E-O. And now, let's get into the episode. I don't want to go back to work, man. I don't want to go back to work. You know, there's something nice when you got the children outside and they are outside. And, they're, you know, they're doing stuff. They got, they got, you know, they've been having a little bit of grill meat in them. They got a little bit of uh, carne, you know, some hamburguesa, some queso. You know, you got, it's something nice when the children are outside. They've been drinking Kool-Aid or drinking hose water. Dude, that's what I used to love, being young. That hose, boy. Remember that? Dude, where we live, we didn't even have a hose. So I remember going to somebody's house, and they had that hose. And it was like, damn. Y'all got just a damn much water as you want? Just coming out of this magic rope? Oh. Dude, I remember just putting that thing straight into my dome hole one time and just taking on as much as I could. My God. I mean, I was so, I was just cameled up, bro. I was just H2 ouch, bro. I was filled with that agua. You know, and Latinos call it that agua. And we and it's water, but they don't know how to say it. It's like agua, agua. You're like now water, but that's where we meet together and we teach each other, you know. But I remember that man, that house hose boy, just a magic ass rope that came out from somewhere, and it would had that water in it. And in summertime, the water tasted a little bit like the pipes. You get that hit and you'd be like, ooh. Or if you were the first person to take a sip off the hose after somebody turned it on, that person was a psychopath maybe? I don't know. Let's ask everyone. Yes. Yes, that person was. Because that, that first hit had that hit. It was rust. It, was, it tasted like house, had a little bit of paint. 
in it, maybe a little bit of iron supplements in there. That first hit, boy, if somebody just went straight off the hose after somebody turned it on, it was always real hot. And that would do, I wouldn't have that, but our, the, my boy Daniel that lived in our neighborhood, he that was his big thing. And he ended up getting into drugs and alcohol and drugs. And he, um, but his big thing was he liked to get that hot hose hit, that first one. That one that, you know, it tastes like a damn two years of science class right up in that first gulp. It'll make you, fuck, you know, it'll make your bones pretend like they don't know each other. That shit has got so many minerals and stuff in it. You know, when you have a damn, you get that first hit off the hose, that hot hose hit, boy. And Daniel would do it. He would do one and he'd go to the neighbors and do another. Next thing you know, he's he, he's testing positive for phosphorus and for, um, you know, boron and shit. Next thing you know, you, you know he he'll walk around a room and the 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 the, the light bulbs in the room will kind of turn and follow him like he's all, because that hot house hit had different elements in it, had iron, you know, had all kind of stuff. Sometimes there'd be a you know some uh, a, a stuck animal in the pipe, and Daniel just take that thing to the dome, boy. He just. <laughs> Just huff a weasel off that first hit of hot house water. And he was risky. He was always kind of a risky boy. He was always, I mean, really always just kind of that risky boy. Let's go. little morose out there sorry but that song is also positive let's all have let's have some fun let's have some fun when we're out while we're out here oh good to see you today even of uh, even audio even over audio i know you're there i'm here it is uh july 7 sunday evening here in los angeles and it's summer it's, I mean, it's the dog days of summer. It's hot. It's hot, man. Even hell right now. Even Hades. They're closed down. They said closed for the summer. It's hot. It's so hot everywhere. You don't need, we can't do any business right now. That's why it's kind of beautiful, I think, if you, um, if you die in the summertime, you know, if you relinquish your uh, living pass, you know, if the Lord gives you two yellow cards and sends you on up in the summertime, you, you pretty much go to heaven. Because Hades is closed for repairs because Mother Earth is putting on her own warm freak show out here called Summertime. And it is spicy. I mean, it's uh, people just... People talking like that. People can't even... Even people's ideas are real dry. You know, if you get an idea... If you, if you, you know... If you got a couple ideas out of somebody and you put them on a plate, you'd probably be able to cut them up with a credit card and... And hit them, hit, put them cats in your freaking, in your little going, in your little to go brain, in your little to go box in your head, your brain. You'd be able to free, free base them hoes, boy. Because even people's ideas are, they're just, things are, uh, there's not a lot of moisture running around. 
you know, it's not even it's the summer is really not a good time for sex. It's more of a time for um, for spiders and for getting a good deal on some cocaine because there's not a lot of moisture out there. Oh, that earthquake. People kept hitting me. Are you okay? Well, dude, how am I going to be okay if I'm sitting here telling you I'm okay all the time? You know what? I'm sorry to get upset, man, but that... Hey, man, just checking. Somebody sent me all caps. Are you okay? Heard there was an earthquake. Well, we don't now you're alarming me. What am I? How, well, it just look if I'm if there's an earthquake, just assume I'm taking the natural precautions. I did what I should have done. I googled what do you do during an earthquake okay that's exactly what I did I googled what do you do during an earthquake and then the first thing I got it uh it had an advertisement for like an earthquake helmet bitch I ain't wearing an earthquake helmet okay I ain't no little shake ho a lot of these fools can't handle a shake I ain't no shake ho. I'm not wearing an earthquake helmet. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry if I sound real feisty about it, but I'm not doing it. I'm not putting on a, a helmet if I, you know, if I feel like Mother Nature's acting wild. That's not really who I am, you know. I'm more, you know, I'm not that guy. And I've said it before. I'm not going to do an, a helmet if I am wear a bicycle, if I have a bicycle. I'm not never letting my son see me in a bike helmet because a, a child can't get that image out of his head of his father on a damn, you know, on a six speed with a, with a basket on the front and a damn bike helmet on. I mean, that kid's going to end up in probably rehab, rehabilitation or, you know, or doing something wild, you know, burying him, you know, doing something crazy, burying himself at the beach or something you know, doing crazy stuff. So you just have to, you know, you got to know what you're going to do and what you're willing not to do. Because it's hot, man. Mother Nature's, you know, we kind of rely on Mother Nature a lot, don't we? You know, we rely, oh yeah, she's going to come around with that next, with that next card. She's going to play that summer and then she's going to play that, the fall, the autumn. And then she's going to play that winter card and then she'll be back with the spring. But look, Everybody knows some of these bitches out there and some of these male bitches can be unreliable. So, Mother Nature, you don't know if this bitch is fully reliable. She's only been doing the seasons how long? Do we know? Let me Google that right now. How long has Mother Nature? Uh, yeah, this doesn't even know. It says four seasons. Get a night at the four seasons. See, this is the problem with the world. You know, I'm trying to learn about Mother Nature. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm sleeping somewhere for $700. But we don't know how long she's been operating. So, we don't know when she's going to give up. She might leave the table for a round and say, you know what, I'm sitting this one out. It's autumn only this year. It's summer only. So we just don't know. So we got to just, I think, you know, right now I got to be grateful that I have, I got water. I got, I got, uh, what else? I'm doing Uber, you know, so everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. Um, what else is going on? What else is happening? I, uh... I've been playing video games. I got Modern Warfare Call of Duty. And it's fun. It's definitely fun, but it's different. It's a lot different, I feel like, than when I was young. These get the video games now, you can't really lose. Every time you get a little they got a checkpoint, they call it. You check oh, you got the checkpoint. Whenever you start back again, you start right here, buckaroo. 
Good luck. Good luck, young buck. You're going to be, you're going to do great out there. Dude, when I was young, I remember you had to, look, if you, we knew, like, you had a couple of lives, and if you lost them all, guess what? You had to start over at the beginning of the game. And it was insane. I remember if you got to the point where you're going to fight the bad guy. Remember, you're going to fight Bowser. Dude, I would pause the game. Dude, I would take a break. Uh, you know, I'd get my, I'd get my brother, dude, dude, do a massage, do a massage. My hands, I'd, I'd put, be putting chalk on my hands. I'd be doing cleaning jerks in the yard. I would get ready. If you were about to fight Bowser, I would get a rest for two days. Just leave it. Leave the screen on. I would be, there was no, I would invite grandma. She's my good luck charm. Invite her over. Grandma would drive down from Illinois. If I'm fighting Bowser, you had to prepare. This was it. This was the big showdown. You weren't going to get a million chances at it. Remember, you would do everything. You, you, you know, you'd have, maybe your dad would even come back. He hadn't seen you in years. He shows up to help you fight, to help you, to, to watch you fight him. And he's in disguise because he don't want your mom trying to get any of the money he owes. And then he leaves. You lose and he's gone. But, you know, but there's rumors that it was him. It was just a different time. And if you were at the, if you were fighting the champ, the Bowser, and now it's like you're at the end. They got a movie in between to make you feel comfortable. You can restart a million times at the end. You can't lose. You can't really lose. But it was different back then. You had do remember sometimes you would have to put something in the machine, the machine broke. After a while it broke and you had to put something in there to hold the game in place. Or you had to have your sister sit there and hold the game. Remember that? Hold the game. She's like, I'm not holding the game. You're damn holding the game or you ain't eating. And she would hold the game. But then she would get nervous or something. Or she would sneeze and move both her hands to cover her mouth because she had manners. And she, and she, and she, and she fucked the game up. And everybody would be pissed. And you wouldn't forget it. Even at Christmas times, you wouldn't get her nothing. And you, and because you couldn't forget that. But yeah, you had, look, it took you a day to get to Bowser. And by God, you would train, you would eat healthy. You would have all your Brussels spouts just getting ready. Pause the game upstairs. You're fighting, you're ready. Different. But yeah, I've been playing Modern Warfare Call of Duty a little bit. Um, I don't have a, I guess I have a screen name, but I don't know how to put it out there yet, out into the ether. But it's summertime, it's hot. It's hot as Hades. And it's Hades is even shut down right now because it's hot enough out here. So it is a free-for-all in heaven right now. Everybody's getting in. What else is happening? I watched the fights. Man, it was crazy. Dude, some of the fights, it's... I mean, it was... I think I was thinking about what do I like about the fights. Oh, and I got this paid in full, too. If it, this is a, one of Dustin Poirier's shirts. And if you want to snag it, it's out there on... I don't know what it is. He didn't even know I got this, but... Uh, but, yeah, it's out there Um, I think, Parish Inc., is the company that has them. But, um, oh, and we have an RIP Billy Conforto shirt up as well. Uh, and shout out to the Embankment Gang and everybody that's been so supportive. And we're going to do something nice for his mother uh, with the proceeds. She has no idea how many people care about her son um, who's lost, who's gone, not lost, but who's certainly gone to heaven and is definitely probably one of the toughest gay male boxers, bus boy pet owners who drive a 4.0 Mustang uh, with a convertible top, but the convertible top is inactive. 
the the sticks of it are there but the the material part is gone so it's just you could pull the sticks forward but it just looks dumb it looks like kind of two ant arms kind of but anyway um but you can get those at theovon.com slash store yeah it's summer it's the dog days of summer they call it so and i wonder why they call it that i guess a long time ago they had you know i don't know i guess it was so hot that that only dogs probably were were still your friend because people don't want to be a friend in the summer. Friendship's more of a f- autumn time thing. Summer, it's people are trying to survive. You know, every year, a couple senior citizens, they don't make it through the summer. They have something called heat stroke. People just can't even, too much heat for them, and they just go, go see the Lord. They're like, oh, it's too hot out here, bro. Catch you guys on, on the B side. I'm going to see the... The Lord. Uh, yeah, I watched the fights. Man, the thing about the fights that gets me is um, I think it's just such a thing that I can't do. It's such a it's such a fear of mine. Like if you lock me in a cage with somebody. Like I'm glad I'm not one of the referees of the fights of the UFC because I, my stomach is just is not built for it. I would stop the fight. Right when they got in the ring, I'd be like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, guys, this I'm gonna call the principal right now. We got to shut this down." Unless I was fighting honestly, like if they had comedians, you know, I I mean, I think I could fight Chris D'Elia probably, and I'd put that on an undercard if B, if uh if Justin Bieber fought um Tommy Cruz. I'd go undercard and fight uh I'd fight Delia on that card. I would take Delia and then I think you also put like a Duncan Trussell up against like a Ben Shapiro. And I think you put like lastly, I'd like to see like a Owen Benjamin versus like a Chelsea Handler. Um you know. Uh Yeah, those are some fights that I think would be cool to see on a card um what else man what else oh, there's other stuff uh what's been going on what's been going on i um i don't know man this weekend i was kind of honest like i didn't really do much for for fourth of july uh i went and walked up and down the boardwalk in venice and it was you know, it's nice to see everybody out there. People just enjoying, you know, they got a little kid, you know, sucking on a beef franc. And it's not sexual, though. It's in the spirit of, you know, of America. And and they got somebody, they got a thick broad or something on Instagram popping off doing fireworks. You know, and she got a couple mixed kids in the back of a, uh, in the back of a Toyota Tercel. And there's no... You know, for one day, it's not about child support or nothing. It's about just celebrating America. And so it was great to see you got people, you know, they had a guy in a wheelchair and his family had painted. He was in a full body cast. And I don't I think he it looked to me like he should have been in the hospital. I guess if somebody's in a full body cast, I mean, who cares? I guess even at the hospital, they can't do anything. But this family had him out. They had him on like a gurney pushing him around. Which is weird. I, you see people in wheelchairs. I've never seen a family just pushing a dude around on a gurney. Actually, I have one other time at a party. But but yeah, not just on the by the beach. And they were pushing this guy. And I'd just be scared if uh, that a woodpecker get into you. Because that full body cast, you got to... I mean, that's a playground for woodpeckers really when you think about that i mean and that would be the worst you somebody parks you in the yard for a minute or outside of a 7-eleven you know and you want you 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 gurneyed up something happened to you fire or you know probably about a six-story fall i think four stories or under you probably could be just in a uh, wheelchair but 
anything over four, you're going to end up on a gurney full body cast. Um, I, that's what I think. I've only fallen off of, I think the most I've fallen off of probably 20 feet. Um, and I ended up actually, I got attacked by animals right when I hit the ground. And it's crazy because if you get attacked by animals right after you go through a big fall, you almost don't even remember the fall because you're having to defend yourself so much. Um, but yeah, it's summertime, man. What are we talking about? Yeah, woodpeckers. That's what I would be most afraid of if, uh, you know, you're at, you know, your buddy is 7-Eleven. He's supposed to be responsible and he leaves you outside of the 7-Eleven and go in there and get a, uh, you know, get a thing of Starburst or something. And a minute made, and next thing you know, they got a couple fucking dub peas hit you up, man. A couple woodpeckers just start just teeing off into your fucking in your leg and arms and shit. You like that, you know? You like that? You in that full body cast, and next thing you know, they got three or four woodpeckers trying to teach you a lesson. I mean, that's really that's the dark arts right there. So if you're in a wheelchair or something, you have to know who's pushing you around. You can't just let anybody push you around. You got to ask, hey, let me see some, you know, some credentials or something. Let me see a, your driver's license. Let me see, you know, do you know anybody else that's handicapped? Can you roller skate? You got to ask these people questions. Because when you put your, you know, when you're in a full body cast and you let just any fucking lollygagger kind of just sort, just sort of you around the world, you're susceptible to shit, man. Dude, they park you in a busy spot. They park, you know, it could be lights out, baby. So, um, we got some great calls that came in. It is summertime. So, let's see if we can keep you guys cool. Welcome to this cool episode. We're going to keep it cool in here. Because that was the thing, staying cool. How do you stay cool? You know, we used to go get water and put it on the bed at night. Because my mom, the lowest she would put the air conditioner, I think was maybe 78. So, because air conditioning is expensive. And so, at night we would go get water and get a handfuls of water and put it on the bed and you'd wet your bed really with your hands with with cold water and then lay in it and man it was uh i guess it was i guess it was awesome you know it'd be so cold and you go to sleep and you wake up and then the bed would be kind of dry and you would be uh and you would be you would able able to get to sleep but it would get you over that hump and sometimes, you know, it'd be kind of scary because you have to go get the water and bring it to your bed and you try to put it out. But the hand is not a very good serving instrument for just straight water. So you'd have to go get a couple handfuls. You're running back and forth and, uh, and put it by your keen areas. You put a little up by your head. You could rest your head on the wet sheet. Put a little by your heart where you, you know, that fucking mid heater. That's that central that's that central heat unit. And you put a couple down by your feet and your thighs and your and your organ, bro, your low organ, your wing. And you just get keep that area cool. So we got some calls that came in. The hotline is 985-664-9503. We had a fellow that called in last week. Uh, let's play a bit of his call uh, right here. Me and my ex-wife went through a pretty nasty divorce in 2017. It was just, like, nasty between us. We have two little kids. We kind of went on and dated other people. I got my own place now. Um, I'm recently single. She's been coming around a little bit more than she used to, and uh, we've been doing some fun stuff with the kids. But she's been, like, staying the night, and uh, I don't really know what to do because she's dating this other guy, like I said. kind of feel like it's different because we used to be married and we got kids and stuff, and I'm kind of hoping that we rekindle whatever used to happen so I can, you know, get, get my family back or whatever. But with her dating this other guy, maybe I should cut her off or I don't know what to do, man. And some people called in with uh, suggestions for this young fella. You know, and sometimes we can offer suggestions and that's helpful. And, um, and here is some of those. Here's one that came in for the guy. Here you go, young buck. 
Yo, Mr. Theo. My name is Lucas. Um, big fan over here. What's up, Lucas? Lucas with the lid off. That's an old... I don't know what that is, actually. But um, thank you for calling in, Lucas. Onward. Uh, 39 years old in about two weeks, so, uh, you know, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that big time. And oh, yeah, feeling that age, bro. Your nuts getting long, huh? Dude, my nuts grew about probably half inch this year. So, dude, I'm glad I'm not drinking right now. If I was, I'd cut, I'd, I'd cut off about two inches of my damn nut sack or cinch that thing up at the bottom and just like a damn thing of boudin and tighten it up because my nuts are getting e egregious. Let's hear more, Lucas. Sorry to interrupt you, brother. Anyway, this is for uh, Austin uh, out of Utah. He called in with some uh, recently divorced uh, some issues, you know, how to handle, how to proceed during these, these times. And uh, me, myself, I'm, uh, you know, come August, it'll be uh, one year since I've, I've uh, been separated from my my wife, you know, and kids, uh, two stepdaughters uh, and a son. Um, it's tough, man, and um, she's kind of helped me see, you know, because at first you want to do the thing that's real comfortable, you know, you just want to, you want to slip back into that, to where you were, because that's what you've known for so long, that's, that's what you, that's your comfort zone, you know, so you just want to, like, forget about all that um, that pain and just get back in there, but you got to be aware that those kids are watching, you know. So um, you don't want to give them no false hope, right? So uh, shit, man, this shit sucks. I feel your boy's pain right there. So um, you know, just she's all doing her own thing, and you said you already were doing your own thing, Austin. So maybe just um, try to keep it, you know, just friends and uh, don't give the kids no false hope because they just take one argument. You got to be right back to where you are. She's already seen somebody else, so it's like it'd be easy for her just to say, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, you got to protect your heart because you're already going through the pain. You don't want to keep repeating that, that issue over and over again. So just, uh, you know, keep your head up. You got them little ones watching. Try to uh, get out and do your own thing and just be be a good dude. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do right now. So it ain't, it ain't easy, right? And uh, Theo, um, listening to you, man, has helped me out tremendously. Um, uh, I thought Oh, you and uh, Brendan Shrub and stupid Brian Collin Collander, whatever. Well, thanks, man. That's uh, that's sweet of you to say those things, man. And honestly, that's a great suggestion. I feel like. I mean, I don't think anybody listening could say that that's not a real clean. I mean, you could tell it's right there with you in your own life. And yeah, it's so hard. I mean, it's you know, it's hard to. You know, it's hard to sometimes just want to live the reality. It's hard to want to live the reality. You know, it's easy to we fall back back into those comfort zones, and but those comfort zones can be the same places where we, you know, took each other for granted or manipulated each other or didn't, uh, you know, or were dishonest, and it's just hard. But it's hard not to want them because they're comfortable. You know, it's hard not to just, you know, want to be with somebody because even for that one hour of the day or something where you guys make each other feel great, it's like uh, it's a lot of times that'll overshadow the other time where you really, where you don't or where you don't come through all the way or where it's not working. Um. But yeah, I think if 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 this has to be a new experience, you have to be a new experience. Uh, but Lucas, those are great suggestions that you have for Austin, man. That's the, I appreciate you calling and sharing that. You know, on such a you know such a I mean, that's a really sincere level, man. You know, I could feel your, you know, those kids are watching. Yeah, and we don't realize the repercussions of things that we do around children. I don't have children, but I was a children or a child. And I was one child, and and uh, and yeah, those things they they embed into the kids, and sometimes you don't know what they're gonna be, you know, what move, what action or something is gonna live inside of a kid, but but I think you just do your best to mitigate the the number of them, and yeah, it's like a lot of times I want things to change in my life, you know, I want this to be different or that to be different, but the truth is. Life's always going to be kind of the same in a lot of ways. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be fairness, there's going to be unfairness. 
And if I want things to be different, I, I really have to be different. You know, I really have to adjust myself. I have to come with a new perspective. I have to take contrary action to get out of the same right hand circle that I'm always going in. I have to do, I have to be different. Life for most part is going to be, it's going to be life. So the variable that I can control is me. If I, you know, if I show up to work every day and I hate my job, what if I showed up one day and I loved my job? You know, I've had a tough time sometimes even in my, even here at the podcast, you know, sometimes over, over the times I, I get, uh, you know, I, I would get, you know, I get fiery or antsy towards uh, Nick, the producer. And then I realize, well, what if I try to just really make an effort to, um, to be just how can I help? What can I do? Even if I just include that with times when I'm uncertain about what's going on, it just and and it's it's created a better atmosphere. You know, it's uh, but it's like we just gotta we have to be different. You know, we and it's it sucks, and because the truth is, I don't want to admit that. I don't want to admit I gotta be different. Oh, great, something else I gotta do. If I want my life to change, but those are great suggestions. That's kind of a tangent I went on, but that's a, that's such a great suggestion, man, is that, you know, just play it safe, stay in the cut, stay where you are, you know, enjoy, really enjoy the moment you guys are having, I think together with your children and the rest of it will work out. Cause one thing that'd be great to have more than trying to give the, the relationship a go again will be the lifelong relationship of, a, of, of comfort and good teamwork that you have um, with your ex. And you know what? Be loving to that dude, whoever the dude is she likes. Buy that dude a scarf. Buy that dude a, um, you know, a uh, set of skating wheels. Get him something. Do something for him. Get him a thing of paint or something if he's going to paint something. Oh, yeah, there's a fucking thing of paint, bruh. There's four gallons of matte finish for you, Randall. Get what you want. Be loving to that dude. Love everything she loves. Blow it out the water, bro. Just get a fucking love zooka and just start just... You win every time, man. But shout out to both you guys, man. It sound like you guys are both on the hustle to be uh, some good dads out there. Uh, let's take another call, a suggestion that came in for uh, for Austin. Get in there. Theo, what up? Wyatt from down here in Space Coast, Florida. Wyatt down there from Space Coast, Florida. That's alien country. And I'll tell you right now, if aliens come back, uh, G-U-R-O-N-T-U, they will be in Florida. Let's hear more. Home of them outer space hitters. Just don't tell Eddie Bravo. Uh, nah, man, I had to pause the podcast and call in about old boy um, that's having, he has a, a kid with the woman and she's dating somebody, but now she's trying to come back in his life. Spend, spend oh, yeah, that menage on trouble. That's what you're talking about, Onward. Spend nights together and all that kind of stuff. They were married. Well, let me just put in my two cents. I have a... a beautiful one-year-old son with a woman here in Florida. We dated, were together for a while. We split, then tried to work things back out. Um, but I'm going to say maybe not all women, but 99.999% of women are out for attention. Uh, so she had already showed that her feelings for him aren't true if she's already out dating another dude and then want to try to come to his house at night and stuff like that. So my advice for him would be keep the relationship as civil as possible, do the mom and dad thing as much as possible, and I know it's going to hurt because we all want that family thing. I mean, I would die to, you know, be the picture-perfect family for my son, but it's just not in our cards. Um so, so my advice for him, man, would keep it civil, be dad, be mom. But she's already shown that her feelings for you are are not as real as you would like them to be with her already dating somebody else. 
And there you go. That's another outlook on it right there. Um, yes, if a woman, you know, if someone, you know, I think do women want attention? I feel like we all want attention. I feel like women will test the water more to see what's going on. Men are more reactive. And men and women are more, even if they don't know it sometimes, you know, emotion. Uh, uh, they're emo they're more emotionally strategic i think it's built into them as humans and so yeah she may be testing the water she may be she may just be looking for attention you never know um you know i've been in a relationship where you you know sometimes you just want to be there for somebody Sometimes you just want somebody, you know, we, we, we all want different things at different times. Maybe she just wants some attention. Yeah, maybe she does. Um, but maybe she's testing you. Or maybe she's not ready. Maybe she doesn't know if she's ready right now. Maybe her subconscious is testing out the waters before she puts on her bathing suit. We don't know sometimes what, sometimes our behaviors may be coming from a deeper cauldron than the bowl of soup that we're showing to other people. You know, sometimes, our, I mean, what what's going on inside of us, our subconscious, who we are, our inner need for things is, is, is a huge entity. And it may be laying the groundwork for bigger possibilities. You know, for, for plans that it has that we're not even able to see yet. So there's a lot of there's a lot in that, but yes, yeah, you might be looking for attention. I mean, I think this gentleman from uh, down there from Alien Country sounds like he might uh, you know, it, it there might not be hope in his situation. Austin may f still feel like there's hope. Who knows? Um, but a couple good ways to look at it, and thank both of you guys for your suggestions for that fella. Um, that's kind of you, and and it's good to be able to hear from people who you know I think are or being as earnest as possible with what's going on with them. But it's brave for any of you guys, man. Get out there and have an offspring. You know, it's wild. I just, I, it would just, for me, I get scared sometimes, you know. I just get scared. But I get fucking scared of everything. So if I don't make some choices soon, I'm going to be, I'm going to be just a 90-year-old damn, you know, just, uh, I'll just be in the Frady, uh, up in the Frady tree, bro, because I'll just be a Frady cat. Be a whole bunch of us out there. Um, let's get into this, man. Here is um, what you have to know that this past weekend is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. Yep, if you create something, if you like to be creative, nurture that side of yourself. You know, I realized long ago in my life that I am not a good facilitator. I am more of a creative type. I took a test online that they give to people, you know, to CIA people and people in the government and even cafeteria workers, like the main one, not the side people, not the scoopers, but the lady in the back with the fucking, you know, with that heat helmet on who's really just rifling off orders, bake that bread, get, you know, hush them puppies, green those beans. You know, Salisbury, those Steox, bro. You know, the real hitter. That uh, that colonel. You know, that meat colonel. That recipe captain. Um, anyway, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. You'll discover countless ways to fuel your curiosity, creativity, and career. Take classes in social media marketing, mobile photography, creative writing, or even illustration. Whether you're looking to discover a new passion, start a side hustle. If you want to do something, you want to sell turtles or something. You want to raise them turtles, bro. Get one. You want to raise a, uh, you know, a thing of calamari or whatever. Do whatever you want. You can learn the skill on here. Skillshare is there to keep you learning, thriving, and reaching those new goals. You could do magic. You could do painting. There's, think of something, and now you can do it. 
You just have to learn the skill. You want to learn filmmaking? Try low-budget filmmaking. Tips and tricks for an indie look. It's one of the most popular courses on the uh, platform. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right, Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. Um, oh, let's take another call that came into the hotline, 985-664-9503. And here we go. Gang, gang, Theo, it's Amber. and Gang, gang, Amber. And that little mommy, huh? That wild mommy, that undercover bad girl out there. You sound like you out there shepherding sheep, you know, like you and like you out there maybe just coming off a uh, you know, a late night work shift or doing some of the dark arts or something. Let me get at you, girlfriend. Go. I am thinking about um, wondering how you're doing with cigarettes. I heard you were back on those reddies. Just wondering if you're tapering off and uh getting back off the hog. Well, thanks for checking about that. Um, here, let's listen to a little more of you. Because they are no bueno, brother. Also curious, did you ever try, like, to duel? I know there's some baggage around, like, the kind of people that might vape. Um, <laughs> oh, there's definitely some bake, uh, vape. There's definitely some vape baggage. Look, here's the thing. Um, thank you for caring, first of all, and caring about how I'm feeling and what's going on with me health-wise. Uh, I haven't had a cigarette today. I smoked half of a cigarette. I saved half from yesterday, and I smoked the other half last night. And I'm trying to get through the day, no cigarettes. Now, what I know right now is I'm going to go to a couple meetings later. There's going to be cigarettes at the meetings. So I have to plan right now, do I plan on smoking a cigarette or not? And right now I say, if I'm real honest, I say probably not, but maybe. So ways I could prevent that are to me some, get some gum, get a little sucker candy, lemon candy, get me a raspberry candy. If I have a raspberry candy, I won't smoke. But if I have a fucking orange candy, if I have a watermelon candy, bro, I might take that out and get that ciggy, bro. Get that freaking hitter. So that's the thing. It's like I really need to maybe look online for specifically for raspberry candies. And I hate it. I hate the smoke. And I hate the way it makes me feel. It makes me feel sick. It makes me feel sad. But that's only if I smoke a bunch. If I just have one, if I haven't had one in a few days or weeks or something. That thing tastes saucy, boy. That thing tastes... And it gives me a chance to do something. Sometimes I just want to smoke a dang smoke. You know, sometimes you just want to fucking piss out of the damn limousine. You feel me? Sometimes you just want to just get a spoonful of your own freaking self and just fuck, flick it at somebody. So, whatever. I think I'm, I don't know. This new chair we got in here is kind of hard and it's kind of pressing into some of my nerves uh but i'm doing okay with it i'm still fighting it i've done really well and uh and then something happened i don't know i jumped back in them i jumped back on them um but today's been a good ba a good day in the battle thank you for caring about that uh what was the second part of your question so curious did you ever try like to jewel oh i ain't doing that the jewel or the vape you got nine-year-olds out here they don't even know that they're smoking Oh, I'm doing tangerine, bitch. You smoking. Okay? Okay, little Franklin, you fucking, you, you're a smoker. You got, you know, by, by the time... What is that? By the time these kids are in sixth grade, they're, uh... They're... Did I just win something? What was that? By the time these... <laughs> Damn, there's a wizard in these outlets, man. By the time I'm in sixth grade, they, you know, everybody's talking through a whole, the whole, everybody at school. 
oh, I'm good, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I, I was doing creme brulee. It's ins- you can't do this shit. They don't know if these things are okay. A lot of times you get the vapes and it made my throat hurt. I did it for about six hours one night. And I probably did about maybe 160 milligrams or something. I went through about six of those little, uh, you know, the um, carbines or whatever. And, dude, I did mint. I did creme brulee. Shit, I didn't even know what my name was after one of them. But in the morning, I couldn't. I think I had my, part of my throat it just, uh, just felt like there was a hole in it. I felt like if I ate a, if I swallowed a marble, I would never, it wouldn't even come out my, you know, the other part of my body that's not my mouth. So, okay, but thank you for a uh, question. Let's get a little more from you. I know if there's some baggage around, like the kind of people that might vape, um, but it helped me quit cigarettes for like three years, and then I just stopped doing it altogether. Try it, bro. So that, yeah, when it comes to vaping, um, that's where I'm at, you know, everybody's going to be on the soccer team. They can't even read or breathe. They got, you know, I, uh, I was, um, I did, uh, butterscotch. It just, this shit seems illegal. It just seems way too wild to get kids addicted. But then also maybe I'm getting old. And maybe now it's just better. It's just better to smoke and smoke fun shit. And maybe the same number of people are smoking as always. Because a lot of these news stories, who knows if they're accurate? They don't know. None of They weren't accurate during the election. Remember the, during the uh, last presidential election? All their numbers, had, they had no real basis on actual humanity. So... Who knows if any of these numbers are accurate. But it does seem more either, for a kid, it seems more fun if you're hitting on lime or, you know, key lime uh, pie or Mississippi mud. You got that Mississippi mud vape pen. Whereas if you just old-fashioned and you got to suck on that nasty, on that fucking spark and just that sparky nasty, that regular cig. But thank you for calling, young lady. I appreciate it. Uh, I just want to let you know a couple shows. This Saturday, the 13th of July, we have a new show at the at the um, Improv, at the Hollywood Improv in Los Angeles. So come out to that one. Uh, it won't be uh, for sale probably until Tuesday morning. But uh, just letting you know that's going to happen. We also have a show, Cobbs, uh, San Francisco, on July 25th. Um, a late uh, Thursday show has been added that week. Um, upcoming cities as well, Sacramento, Las Vegas, Memphis, Atlanta, Louisville, Brea, uh, Biloxi. And we added a, a show on, um, I believe, the 21st or 22nd in Manchester or in London. It's an afternoon show. All those are available at theovon.com slash tour, T-O-U-R. I want to get to a couple of Patreon questions that came in. This one is uh, from Gunt Squad Gary. You arrive at the studio and it's burning down with Nick and Gianni still inside. You only have time to save one of them. Who's it going to be? Nick. Going to be Nick. And that was Nick there. Um, w- this is from Angela Coner. What are your thoughts on child actors? The kids on Stranger Things made me think about it. I would be proud of my son to be in something successful. I would want him to have a normal childhood, though. Would you want the showbiz life for your own child someday? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, from my experience around uh, some of some child actors who are now adults, it seems like the odds of them staying well-adjusted are not good. There's too many other heavy influences. Uh, Wealth, money. Money's a hard influence to deal with even as you get older. So to have it when you're young, um, especially in like a me generation, like a me time, like where everyone has is creating their own universes, um, where the family structure seems to be a little more confused or a little bit more evolving. I would say no. I don't think it's safe. I think 
you see parents that are taking these very young children to do it, and it always seems like there's no way that child could have made that choice yet. Um, if they want to act or do that, I think a safe, fun environment to do it in is just through school, through plays at school and things of that sort. And then when they get a little bit older, you know, let them make their own choice as an adult. If, if uh, you know, going out to Los Angeles or New York or even just starting something in their own area is, is, is solid. I just, there's too much money. There's too much business. There's too much cutthroat type of stuff going on out here um there's too much dirty influence that i don't think a child should have you know kids get it in in other places elsewhere but here it can be so much more everything can have there can be stuff going on behind the scenes you don't even really realize it's so hard to kind of know who to trust because a lot of the livelihood here is um is entertainment so people are always going to be angling and always going to be, you know, haggling. Just being alive here in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, it's, it's entertainment. Everything you do is kind of somehow tied in. I mean, all your friendships are a little bit, have a little, you met them through work. You, you know, there's always, work is always, if it ain't in the house, it's, it's right there, you know, peeking in the window. So I don't think it would be a safe environment for, uh, it doesn't seem like something fun. Um, and it can be real scary. I think a child growing up with fame and popularity and 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 f- like a false sense of self. I mean, we are, it just seems very... It doesn't seem wrong, but it seems very unnatural. And like the consequences... The ramifications of it could be much more severe. Uh, but also, you know, I didn't have that experience, so I, I, I don't know exactly. It was just my thoughts. Diana Morton asked, why do guys puff up like lizards when they come around and meet each other for the first time? Voices change, shoulders get broader. Kind of reminds me of bearded dragons, LOL. Yeah, I think that's it. That's why. You know, if another man come up, you want to show him what you what you got. You want to show him your tits, but be cool. You know, you want to do the secret handshakes, you know, do the whistle, whatever. Do what, you know, do whatever's got to be cool. You want to, you know, you want to have that net. You want to seem in the know. I think it's very, yeah, just tribal. It goes back to nature. That's one of our natural behaviors. That's very, ca- uh... What is that term? Cognitive? I don't know. Fuck, my neck is killing me, bro. I just wish somebody would almost electrocute me in the damn neck. Um, uh, Let's get into uh, this question. What's up, Theo? This is uh, Spencer Bagley from L.A., a.k.a. Spency Night Sweats, a.k.a. Spency Trips After EPs. Uh, hey, man, I have a question for you. I'm curious. What's up, Spencer? About where you get your molly cut. Uh, I'm getting married at the end of the month, and um, I don't know, I'm having a tough time finding a good barber here in L.A. Well, I'll tell you where to do it. I do it over by Floyd's over there on Santa Monica Boulevard by the interstate. And my boy John cuts it. And he's a bicyclist, but he cuts hair. And he bicycles to get the bad energy out of his sit, you know, just to get, you know, that 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 gumption out of his system so he doesn't you know do a crime or fight with you know get in an argument with his wife he gets all that energy out by doing by cycling and when he gets around to doing hair he does it pretty swell and he and it's pretty good i don't even like my hair cut that good and even recently i started cutting it myself again but when i do go to a fashion shop that is where i go to see him um what else here we got a call that came in right here as always the hotline if you're struggling with something um you have something on your mind or heart hit the hotline 985-664-9503 hey uh theo this is kenny from atlanta what's up kenny from that atl them atlians boy let's get it and uh i was listening to your podcast your most recent podcast about relish I had a, you talking about relish, yeah. 
idea or maybe it was an epiphany. I was thinking, is relish just a gay pickle? You know, is it that homoerotic bad boy? It's a good question. Is relish just a gay pickle? And you might be on to something. You know, Epiphany Kenny out here just throwing those thought javelins at us and they're hitting us. You might be on to something. Is relish a gay pickle? Relish is something. It definitely seems like, uh, you know, it's almost like a salad set. Fuck it. Let's be jello. So there's definitely something going on there. I think I think it would test positive for some different types of stuff. You know, um, so I think there's there's something in the water right there. You got you got you got a good uh you got a good good idea there. Epiphany Kenny. Fuck my neck hurts, bro. What is going on, man? I got to tighten up. Um <sighs> What else is going on? Let's take one more call here. As always, the hotline, 985-664-9503. Hey, Theo Gay Gang, this is Mike from Austin, Texas. I um, often think about, I know you're on the wagon. I've been on the wagon. Thanks for calling in, Mike from Austin. We appreciate you, boy. On what? Just fell off. Uh, hotel room. Got some stuff. Got some... Whew, it's been a night. Okay, so you dark arting right now. And you out there in the shadows. In the shadows. Um, thank you for calling in, man. I appreciate it, bro. What's happening, bro? Don't feel too bad. Don't feel too good. A little sad. The sun's coming up at 7 a.m. Ooh, ooh. That sun's coming up. Yeah, man. Feeling, don't feel too bad, don't feel too good. I can, yeah, I can relate, man. Because I miss, sometimes I miss doing that party. I miss letting that dangerous squirrel just run up into my fucking brain, bruh. And just start looking for applesauce, man. Sometimes I just miss that, just miss letting that dirty rabbit just, just, just climb up in your up in your thought cabin and just start skating, bro. Sometimes I miss that. Let's hear more. And I often think how you'll handle it if you fall off, and if you're gonna how you how you will navigate those waters, the guilt, or um, hopefully you'll never fall off. Um, but. Feeling sad, feeling lonely. Had a an okay night. Went to a strip club. Brought a stripper back to the hotel. Had some good conversations. No touchy, which is always good. Okay, you got the stripper. You got the hotel. You got it all. You got the arts. I mean, you, this is dark arts. This is a, this is a museum. This is the um, the Gilgenheim for the dark arts. Yeah, I don't know how I will navigate that. Um, you know, I mean, I think it's like, you know, you just fell off the wagon, you said. And I mean, I feel, I, I definitely feel for you, man. Like, I, I mean, it sounds like you just kind of had like a night and, and I hope you're doing okay now. Um, it sounds like you just kind of had a party night and uh, I hope you're doing okay. And that if you choose to, you know, to do, you know, get back on the wagon that there's, there's always a program there that that's, that can be helpful. You know, that's the cool thing about it. It's like, it's always there. It's like one thing that's reliable for people. And, you know, if that happens in my life, I don't know if I'll always be so, you know, be sober. I don't know if I'll always be, you know, you know, in, in that, space and in that headspace um i don't know you know i don't know um but i don't know i i don't think that i hope you don't look down upon yourself because that you know you because you're dabbling in in, in 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 the dark arts man i hope you get back on the horse 
If you feel you want to be back on the horse, I hope you get back on it. I hope whatever you want is what you get. Um, yeah, but I don't know, man. I, 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 you know, I think about that sometimes. Like, man, if I would I be able to sustain, you know, the activity I have in my life, you know. And right now, I'm just, just kind of taking it one day at a time. Um, but thank you for calling in, man. And uh, let's hear a little bit more. And I'm here. I got some beer. I got some lines. And I'm sad as a motherfucker. Mm. So, gang, gang. I hope. I don't know. I hope it helps somebody. But there's some good times, too. I don't want to forget about the good times. Gang, gang. Man, I hate it, dude. I hate it. Thank you for calling, bro. Thank you for calling. And, I mean, even kind of just putting your story out there just as, like, just like, I, I, I didn't like that. You know, and it sounds like you don't really like it that much. I mean, it's fun and then it's not fun. That's the thing. You know, I didn't like the being there in the morning and, dude, I had to cancel what I was doing during the day and my heart just rattling. Just like a rattle, just like a, just a rattlesnake without the snake, boy. My heart just a rattling. Like just, like somebody just rattled just something. And and I and I just wanted to go to sleep and I couldn't go to sleep and I wanted Gatorade and I, and I didn't have any Gatorade. And I was just scared and I used to write a will out. I was scared I was going to die, bro. I just, that kind of shit I don't miss. But, but I definitely miss just letting that donkey just kick me right in the bottom of my brain sometimes. Um, but I hope that you're okay, man. And, and that if you don't want this to become a habit in your life, that it doesn't. And that if you want, something different that you take action to to have something different and thank you for thinking about me and for even caring about you know and for caring about what's going on um i love you man and i hope you feel uh okay no matter what you're doing um i gotta go get a, a shot or something back man I, I i don't know what's going on but it is locking up uh i want to thank everybody for the calls thank you guys for hitting the hotline um and just so much for the support. And whoever you are, you know you out there. You know, I know we got a lot of a lot of wildness in our squad. We got people, you know, Cisco deliveries, them bad boys out there. We got them 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 frisky critters, brother, that FedEx. Them FedEx, uh, them overnighters. Them dudes going all night with the boxes, sneaking through the woods, handing it to their buddy. He runs a leg of it. Then they hand it to Carl Lewis. He does some. Then they got Matthew Bowling. He runs a leg. And next thing you know, that's how they get it overnight to Portland or to wherever, to Oswego. That's how they do it. You know, you got to know that they got, uh, there's other people out there. And they got somebody right now trying soup for the first time and thinking it's good, bro. Is it good? Uh, I don't know, dude. They got they got a baby out there right now for the first time ever having a little bit of applesauce, that lucky bastard. You know, life is happening. They got somebody just found out they're going to have twins, you know. Life, good things are happening. Somebody just won a contest. Somebody just won, you know, somebody's granddaddy just won a, a, a um, what is that thing that you move stuff, but you, like you don't care kind of how you look. Um, wheelbarrow somebody's granddaddy just won a wheelbarrow in a contest you know everything's going on somebody just got a new helmet so a lot of things are happening bro and ladies so just uh, we got this just keep it cool it's summertime we just got to keep it cool and uh, and be good to yourselves because you deserve it I know that
Celebrate dark days. Celebrate all. See y'all next time, man.